In this video lecture, we're going to look at the physiology of digestion, particularly chemical digestion and absorption, all the way along the digestive tract. Um, and this means we're going to look at the enzymes and see which enzymes are responsible for digesting the different uh, organic compounds, those are carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And then once we've broken those um, big macromolecules into their small little building blocks or monomers, let's see how those monomers are then absorbed across the intestinal wall. So first, let's get an idea of what all of our chemicals are. We've got the, first of all, the uh, carbohydrates. Now the carbohydrates are gonna come into our food as either polysaccharides, such as starch or glycogen, or disaccharides, typically as sucrose, maltose, or lactose. Now, if you remember those guys, then once the polysaccharides are digested down into disaccharides, the disaccharides would be digested down finally into the monosaccharides. Now the monosaccharides include glucose, fructose, and galactose. So just keep an idea who belongs to who. Um, of course, starch and glycogen can be any combination of things. So let's uh, concentrate really on the, on the disaccharides. Sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. Hopefully you remember that. And maltose is two molecules of glucose. And lactose is glucose plus a galactose. Now to remember that, it's really not that hard. If you think sucrose is table sugar, and so it, it has glucose plus a fructose. I think fructose is fruit, fruit sweet, table sugar goes together. Um, lactose is a molecule of glucose plus galactose, and of course the galactose has the name in it, and then maltose is two molecules of glucose. So every single one of them has one molecule of glucose, and it's just a matter of remembering what the other one is. And then it's not that hard to keep them all straight. Now the proteins then are coming in as either proteins or polypeptides. So the only difference between that is just the length of the uh, string of amino acids. Um, proteins are typically longer than polypeptides, but they're all going to be broken down into their monomer being, or building block called amino acids. Lipids are going to come in as either fats, oils, or waxes, and the fats in particular are going to end up being um, digested down into glycerol and fatty acids. And here's the enzymes then that are responsible for digestion. You've got starting out at the top salivary amylase, um, is first secreted by the uh, salivary glands into the mouth, and that's where we're going to start seeing digestion of starch. Pepsin, remember, came from the stomach wall and into the stomach to digest proteins. And then you've got a list of several uh, pancreatic enzymes being pancreatic amylase, just another kind of amylase or another source of amylase that starts digesting uh, starch in the duodenum. And then trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase, um, breaking down polypeptides or proteins in the small intestine, and lipase, breaking down the triglycerides into their fatty acids and monoglycerides. And so remember, those are all three are from the pancreas, but they have their different substrate or substance that they break down. Then the rest of the list is all brush border enzymes. If you remember that, those are those enzymes that are integral proteins in the cell membrane of the columnar epithelial cells lining the intestine. And they're going to break down their respective substrates. So maltase breaks down maltose into glucose. Sucrase breaks down sucrose into glucose and fructose. And lactase breaks down lactose into glucose and galactose. And then finally, the last one, aminopeptidase, breaks down the polypeptides into amino acids. So now, once we've got everything broken down, we need to absorb it across the um, columnar cells of the uh, inside or the, along the lumen of the small intestine and then get it absorbed either into our blood or lymphatic system. So we're going to look at each one of those. We'll start first with the monosaccharides. Now the monosaccharides, in order to move across, you can see them up here, the glucose, galactose, and fructose, we need some um, proteins in the cell membrane to help with this transport system. We'll first look at this one. This is a symport transport and it's got to involve sodium being with that. So let's first go down here and look at this sodium potassium pump. 
Now the sodium potassium pump is just the same pump we've always been thinking of. Notice sodium's pumped out, potassium pumped in, but with pumping that sodium out then means we've got a low concentration of sodium inside the cell, a very high concentration inside the lumen. So sodium is going to want to diffuse from the lumen where it's great concentration into the um, columnar cell where there's a low concentration of sodium. So that means it just generally diffuses that way. No need of energy, no nothing. The energy is down here to set up this gradient, but now we have a concentration gradient moving the sodium into the cell. Now, what happens when this sodium moves across, it's gonna be able to drag glucose or galactose with it. Um, and so this is, in a sense, kind of an energy source. This sodium gradient works like an energy source to help pull and concentrate the glucose and galactose into the cell here. And think of this as like a grist mill, if you've ever seen a grist mill. A grist mill is those old mills they used to have alongside of a creek where you had a big wheel on the outside and then that water flowed over the wheel, turning the wheel. The wheel then turned gears inside and the, and the mill grind the flour. Um, and this is kind of the same thing. Instead of water, we have a sodium gradient, sodium diffusing in. So that's our waterfall, so to speak. And instead of a, a wheel, we have a protein here. So that sodium diffusing over, flowing over that protein causes the protein to change its shape, like the wheel turning. And that in turn drags the glucose and galactose into the cell so we can concentrate the glucose and galactose in here. Okay, and again, that's a symporter. Now fructose gets moved across this membrane just by facilitated diffusion. It's gonna diffuse across. So we aren't gonna be able to concentrate the fructose as much into the cell. We can only move it as long as the concentration is greater in the lumen compared to here. But glucose and galactose will be able to really concentrate them inside the cell because this is more of a, an active transport or co-transport mechanism driven by that sodium potassium pump. Either way, we get the glucose, galactose, and fructose inside our cell here and then they can move um, across by just basically a uh, facilitated diffusion mechanism at the other side and don't worry about this glute 2 thing um, but basically it's going to move across and by facilitated diffusion and then into the capillaries for transport um, in our blood okay now absorption of amino acids starts with um, the proteins, of course, being broken down into their amino acids by either the prote uh, pancreatic proteases or the brush border enzymes. And then the same thing happens here. We've got another co-transport mechanism, again, driven by sodium. So sodium concentrated in the lumen, low concentration here. It wants to diffuse in. And then like the grist mill wheel turning, the sodium draws the... Um, amino acids inside the cell. And then at the other end, the cell, the amino acids leave the cell by facilitated diffusion and then enter the capillaries for transport. Now the absorption of fats is a little bit different than the other two, uh, primarily because of the fact that the sugars, the carbohydrates and the amino acids are water soluble. So they need special transport to get inside the cell. But fats aren't, fats are fat. They can just diffuse right across into our cell here. So if we back up a minute, remember the bile salts are gonna break those um, big fat globules into small little uh, drops and then lipase is going to break the bonds among those fats and, and so that you end up with fatty acids and glycerol. And they form what are called micelles. So you can see the bicell salts surrounding it and the fatty acids and the glycerol, they're all broken down um, inside of that. Now that can be easily diffused again across the cell membrane because it's fat, fat in the cell membrane is fat, so they move across. And then inside the cell, the weird things happen. One is that those glycerol and fatty acids reform back into triglycerides. Okay, so the cell forms them back into triglycerides and then puts a coat, think of it a candy coat or a protein coat on the outside of those triglycerides. So think of this um, protein coated 
fat as well they're called a chylomicron but i like to think of them as m&ms where the protein coat is the candy coat on the outside of the m&m and the chocolate inside our m&m is the the fat or the triglyceride inside and then through exocytosis it is moved across the other side of the cell into instead of blood into the lacteal or lymphatic vessel from there the lymphatic vessel carries it through its lymphatic system and eventually will end up um, entering the blood through um, the um, subclavicle veins up at your clavicle. Now a couple disorders associated with um, digestion absorption is going to be uh, one of them going to be lactose intolerance. Now lactose intolerance means you don't have the enzyme lactase um, and so you can't digest the lactose. What happens then is the lactose pulls water into the, intest into the intestine because it makes the intestine um, hypertonic compared to the surrounding um, cells and interstitial fluid and so that's going to keep the water in the intestine and therefore you end up with a runny fecal material or diarrhea. And then you can also get other symptoms like bloating, cramping, and flatulence or gas. And it's a very uncomfortable feeling. Um, now, and that's what you see over here. So lactose pulling the water in, causing the irritation. Also, the bacteria, I should mention, um, will break down the lactose instead of you. And that can cause all the other uncomfortable types of things going on. Now, lactase is needed by infants in order to digest breast milk obviously because the milk has lactose in it so we need lactase to digest it but once the baby is weaned off of the uh, breast milk there was no more need for lactase because in hunter-gatherer kind of societies you didn't drink milk so there's no point in making lactase anymore so you you didn't as an adult so the idea of having lactase through adulthood is actually um, the abnormal condition. And it came about because of that we, um, those populations um, that started raising cattle and using it for a source of milk um, retained the lactase enzyme through adulthood and therefore could drink milk as a, a means of nutrition. So you can find populations throughout the world that tend to be more lactose intolerant because their ancestors never retained the ability to uh, keep le uh, lactase around into adulthood and still to this day then of course they pass that on we can't they those individuals um, can't tolerate lactose Another disease associated with um, absorption of nutrients is celiac disease. Now, celiac disease is an, an immune, due to an immune reaction to gluten. That is, you have an allergic reaction to gluten, and so you can't tolerate gluten. Now, gluten is associated with wheat products and a few other grains, um, and so and it's what makes your bread rise. It helps with the bread rising. Our, and so it's you know prevalent in a lot of things and we've all seen now how gluten is a horrible thing and that that has some controversy to it um, but basically with celiac disease the uh, gluten uh, or the t-cells are attack the intestinal lining because they they mistake um, our cells for um, the gluten or are similar to gluten and then they end up um, ruining the surface of those intestinal linings and so instead of having those nice villi there like you see here the villi just basically flatten out and so that's what you see as celiac disease symptoms you see with celiac disease include bloating diarrhea pain and malnutrition because you're not absorbing stuff as well so that ends our trip down the digestive tract and all of the stuff going on in each part of the digestive system. So you can look at this slide and kind of get an idea of what each organ's contribution is to the digestive process. And then make sure you review all the videos um, to get a better idea of how these organs interact with one another.